First Kings, chapter eight, verse fifty-four. Solomon has ended his prayer of dedication, and it was so that when Solomon had made an end of praying all this prayer and supplications of the Lord, he arose from before the altar of the Lord. Let's go back to eight twenty-two. Just a problem. I don't see what the problem is, but in eight twenty-two, and Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of the congregation. And over here it says, he's kneeling. He went from standing to kneeling. Any problem? <laughs> and yet for some scholars and all that, that's a problem. That's one of them, uh, arch that's one of them, uh, what is it? The Bible's wrong passages. They don't agree with another thing. And notice, again, in 822 in here, he's in front of that brazen altar. Behind him, Actually, be, in front of him, he'd be praying to God, be praying to the temple. Behind him are the people, and he's looking at that temple in the presence of God to the most holy place, praying. From kneeling, that's the first time that word shows up, kneeling. And it's interesting, there's only three times kneeling shows up. You would think that'd be a multiple word of prayer. Matthew 17, 14, and Mark 1, 40. These are the three places where this shows up. Kneeling on his knees with his hands spread up to heaven. So he still got his hands up to heaven as he was standing. And all he does is just drop down to his knees. He's humbling himself. I am in the presence of God. I better get down. Blessed be the Lord. Now we're going, to a t we're going from prayer. Now we're going to a testimony of the Lord. Blessed be the Lord. That has given rest or peace unto his people Israel. During Solomon's reign while well, this, there's peace. There's no war. There's no Phil uh, Philistine trouble. No Edomite trouble. According to all that he's promised. There has not failed one word of all his good promise. Rest on that. Everything that God has said he'll do and will do. Whether the Jew whether to the Gentile or to the church. Whatever God has said, rightly dividing, studying your Bible, it will come to pass. And as much as Jesus Christ came and according to the scriptures, the first advent, you better rest assured that everything in the second advent will be coming, will be true. Which he promised by the hand of Moses, his servant. So, and we read Exodus Leviticus note. Moses said that God said that he will build a city. He will build a house. Here it is. Jerusalem. There's the house right in front of Solomon. The Lord our God be with us as he was with our fathers. Let him not leave us nor forsake us. Well, if you sin and rebel, that he may incline our hearts. Lift it up. Unto him to walk in all his ways. That's proper. Jesus said, I am the way. To keep his commandments. That's where I fall away. We are under the law. We are under works. We're in the Old Testament. We are on this side of Calvary. We do not follow his commandments. And yet there are commandments for the children of God through Jesus Christ. Love one another. Going all the world and preach the gospel. But those are not for salvation. And his statutes. I don't have any statutes. And his judgments. I got judgments. I'm to judge things. The Bible says. Which he commanded our fathers. Jewish fathers. Not church fathers. Not Gentile fathers. And let these my words. Solomon's words. Wherewith I have made supplication before the Lord. Be nigh unto the Lord our God day and night. Always think about the Lord. Always be before the Lord. That he maintain the cause of his servant. And the cause of his people Israel at all times. As the matter shall require. That all the people of the earth may know that the Lord is God. And that there is none else. That temple. The people of Israel. The priests. The sacrifices. These people are obedient in those weird laws. They can't eat seafood. They can't eat pork. 
They got to wear their clothes a certain Why is that? Because their God, they proclaim, is the God of all gods. And if you ever want to meet the God of all gods, you have to go to Jerusalem to meet that God. Now, where has that been falsified? Where has that been possessed today? Oh, the one church that Christ has built. We are the one holy church. Uh, religion, holy nation, holy baloney, and you must do and follow what we tell you to do. That's stealing from the Jewish nation. Today it's not a temple. It's not priests, so to say. And yet Revelation 1, and when we looked at the scriptures the other day, to see that we are the temple of God. Revelation 1 says we are the priests of God. The Bible says that they're to come to Christians, that's us. We're to be that light. Light has come into us. We don't go to a building no more. And we have set aside where the early church, they met in people's houses. Uh, the early uh, revivals of America, they met out in a field. They met out in a factory. There was really no church building yet today. We go for building program. We got mega big extraordinary churches with tons of thousands, not millions of dollars going for electricity and water and not going out for the gospel. That's a failure. Revelation 3 says that all that we are rich with goods, we are rich with blessing. God says, I, you make me sick. But here's the riches that the churches want. They want that gold building. They want that gold surrounded by cedar. They want that lavish gold and furniture with silver. They want that big brazen fire so we can sing kumbaya and have fellowships and just barbecue and see our God. We live by faith, not by sight. Our God is not to be seen. My God is Jesus Christ and I have not seen him. Faith is something things to hope for, the evidence of things not seen. What do you do in the Old Testament? You've got to go see God. How do you see God? There's that temple. There's that God. Well, let me go in and see. No, 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 no. You don't go in there. We got rules for, for our people, the Jewish people. And we got certain rules for you, the strangers. And yet some of our rules are for you too, the stranger. But no one goes in there. Well, how do I get to God? Well, if you do everything you're supposed to, you will die. And you will go to, the Jews will go to Abraham's bosom. I don't know where the Gentiles went. But they wouldn't go to hell if they were right by God. You mean I don't get to go right to heaven? I don't have that promise to be absent from the body and present with the Lord if I go to the temple? No, no, no. That hasn't been written yet. You go off to sleep. You go off as far as the Jews we do know. Go off to Abraham's bosom. And when Christ, the Lamb of God, was taken away the sin of the world, suffered and died, according to the scriptures, was buried and arose again the third day, according to the scriptures, as he told that dying thief on the cross, the day that shall be with me in paradise. And that paradise is gone, thanks to the finished work of Jesus Christ. Today we can say, hey, if you believe on my God, Jesus, you put your faith and trust with your heart, with a true repentance to Jesus Christ and his finished work. If you were to die in a state of grace with your name in the Lamb's book of life, you have believed on Jesus, a new birth, you will be Absent from this body. Present with the Lord. You can't say that with the Old Testament saying. But they got the lavishes. They got what the church wants. The glory of great building. See the great building? The apostles told Jesus, see how great this building is? You can't say that today. If you were to do that today as a Christian, you go over there and people go, well, we go over to the Holy Land. And you go see that great building. That's, a, that's the dumb of the rock. That's an Islamic. That's not Jehovah. And the Catholics will tell you where Jesus did this, where Jesus did that. But Catholics who never opened the Bible, never studied the Bible, trying to tell you what the Bible says. Bunch of baloney. I'll wait till Jesus takes me to Jerusalem. Then he can tell me all the places he were. And let these words, wherein I have made supplication before the Lord, be nigh the Lord our God, day and night, always, that he may make, that maintain the cause of his servant. And the cause of his people, Israel, that's his people at all times, as the matter shall require. That all the people who are, all the people, Jews and Gentiles, may know that the Lord is God, that there is none else. 
You're not learning that from the Jews today. They denied Jesus Christ. You're not going to go to temple. You're not going to go to synagogue. And you're not going to get the message of Jesus Christ. It's the Gentiles now. Not walking in buildings, but walk, go in all the world and preach the gospel. Christ never said, put that church on your back and carry the bricks. Not you go. You're the church. You're the temple. You're the priest. That all the people of the earth may know that the Lord is God and that there is none else. Let your heart therefore be perfect to the perfection that you can do. Do the best you can do for God. Uh, roundabout way, 1 John 2 said, Sin not. But if you sin, we have an advocate. Do your best. Try it. Don't sin. But since you're a sinner and you fail, you've got Jesus Christ today. To walk in his statutes. Again, we don't do that. And to keep his commandments. There are commandments of Jesus. There are commandments before the church. If you get born again and you're saved, get baptized. Have the Lord's Supper. When you do the Lord's Supper, remember the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. And do the Lord's Supper looking forward to his coming. Go in all the world and preach the gospel. Live a clean life after you're saved. Not for salvation, but as a testimony to others say, Man, that guy's weird. Just like those Jews. Those Jews are weird. That guy is weird. Why? Because he has a God. And the king and all Israel with him offer sacrifice before the Lord. This would be the first sacrifices at the new temple. By the people. First time. Solomon offered a sacrifice of peace offering. Leviticus. With offerings unto the Lord. Two and twenty thousand oxen. That's a lot of beef. And we're not done. 120,000 sheep. That's a lot of animals. We'll read a little bit more. So the king and all the children of Israel dedicated the house of the Lord. Now these are not offerings of sin. These are not offerings of the people you're to bring for doing something. Or the feast and all that. This is because here is now the temple. And here is the dedication. Baptist churches do it. We dedicate this building we just built. We're going to have a fellowship or a barbecue or whatever. Hot dogs. And wieners or whatever. It's a celebration. We got it. Here it is. The same day did King hollow the middle court that was before the house of the Lord. All right, they're out in the courtyard. There's a brazen altar, and you would have the the the, the, the laver where you would the priest would wash. Then you got the tabernacle or the the, the house. And inside the house would be the holy place. Then you've got the oracle, the most holy place. Between the altar, the brazen altar, and the house where the labor is, Solomon has to sanctify that area. He has to make that area holy. Why? For there he offered burnt offerings and meat offerings. And the fat of the peace of because the brazen altar was, the brazen altar that was before the Lord was too little to receive the burnt offering. He had to have another source of fire for the Lord. He had to sanctify another area of the courtyard because he just brought so many animals. And he says that altar is just too little. That altar was to serve every day. A, the, the lamb in the morning, the lamb at night. And everybody who brought an offering. And Solomon's offering, the people's offering, this dedication. Uh, Solomon, yes, sir. Yes, praise. <laughs> we can't do any more. We're full. We can't keep up. Oh, Lord God, we can we bless another area so we can keep going. Churches would love this offering. If we could just overflow. And I believe it's um, Jehoshaphat. I'm, maybe, I may be wrong in that name. He said, there's one time that the people just gave. And he walks up to the temple and he sees these pile of heaps. And he turns to the priest and says, what are these heaps? He says, the people just keep giving. They keep giving. And we have so much, we just pile it up. He's like, okay, just put it into the chambers. That's what those chambers are for. Store it up. 
One time Moses said, we're going to take a collection. We're going to build a tabernacle. Everybody bring your offerings, your free will offering. And they're like, Moses, yes, sir. The people bring too much. Yeah, okay, everyone, stop. <laughs> Turn around, go home. You can keep that. That sure doesn't happen in the church days today. That sure doesn't happen. But in the book of Acts, in the early church, when they didn't have builders, they didn't have magnificency. They were helping the poor saints. Jerusalem, the home church, was sending out missionaries. And the missionary churches were sending relief back to Jerusalem. So it's little. Too little to receive the burnt offering and the meat offering and the fat of the peace offering. Find those in Leviticus. And at that time, Solomon held a feast. And all, we're going to come back to this in a moment. So let's read. And all Israel with him, a great congregation. Now that's interesting. A great congregation. I said a great congregation. And I'm not sure even the, I may have to look up another reference. But look, a great congregation. From the entering of Hamath onto the river of Egypt, before the Lord our God, seven days, seven days, even 14 days. On the eighth day, he sent the people away. That's important. And they blessed the king and went unto their tents, joyful and glad of heart for all the goodness that the Lord had done for David his servant. And for Israel, his people. Now, let's go to chapter 8, verse 2. First stop off. Now, this is going to be interesting. Now, I'm speculating. But I think scripture with scripture may not be off. But I'm not 100% sure. Chapter 8, verse 2. And all the men, all the men of Israel. That's important. A great co a congregation. All the Israel assembled themselves unto King Solomon at the feast of the seventh, excuse me, at the feast in the month Ethan, which is the seventh month. We are in the seventh month. There's a feast seven days and there's an eighth day. All right. Leviticus 23, 23, 34. Leviticus 23, 34. And just 33, just for the context. Where, where this chapter is dealing with all the feasts. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel. The fifteenth day of this seventh month, shall be a feast of tabernacles for seven days unto the Lord. On the first day shall be a holy convocation. You shall do no servile work therein. Seven days you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. That sound familiar? On the eighth day shall be a holy convocation unto you. You shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. It's a solemn assembly. That sound familiar? He shall do no servile work therein. And then he goes on to say, These are the feasts. Luke chapter 2, verse 6. Luke chapter 2, verse 6. Now, Feast of Tabernacles would be your proper Bible day if you were to say a date. Or a time for the birthday of Jesus. It fits. Luke 2, 2. And this taxation was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed. Great congregation, Jewish people. Are being called to their Jewish homes. For taxation. God has to use taxation to get Mary to Bethlehem so she can have Jesus in the city of David. 
So God is using taxes for good. All went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, that was mentioned, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, Matthew 1. To be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, that the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. She brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them at the room. Now we know who that is. That's Jesus. It's not December 25th. That's one thing we're sure of. That's one thing I'm 100% sure of. It's not December 25th. It would not be Baal's birthday. But, I'm assured with scripture enough to say, and I can be wrong, but the Feast of Tabernacles, seven days long, and there were the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. Everybody in Israel right now, in Solomon's time right now, are great joy. The temple is there. The temple is here. Did they not accuse Jesus? Destroy the temple in three days and, and build it back up? But he spank of his body. Not the stone building. If Jesus came back, I'll destroy that church. Baptists would get just as upset as the Pharisees and the Sadducees got upset. Can't destroy their buildings. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. Glory, the Lord shone round about them. And they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings. That's the gospel. Glad tidings, good news. Of great joy, which shall be to all people. We wrenching the other people, the all people, the whole earth. For unto you is born this day in the city of David, we saw that, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. They got to be Jews. Jews require a sign. Didn't Jesus call them shepherds? I mean, didn't Jesus call them sheep? They don't have a shepherd. You shall find a babe wrapped in swollen clothes, lying in a manger. Suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, there's no singing, get it right, glory to God in highest and on earth. Wasn't that in our t context that we read Solomon? Peace, wasn't there peace? Wasn't there rest? Goodwill to, toward men. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to her, Let us now go even to Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord has made known unto us. That angel of the Lord, they just called the Lord. Capital O, capital O. That's Jesus. Jesus is lying in the manger, swallowing up in all kinds of clothes, and he's showing up to the shepherds. Hi, guys. Why don't you go see me over there? I love God. He's so great. Can God be everywhere? He's in a manger and now he's talking to the to the shepherds. He can be everywhere. Middle night, baby Jesus is sleeping. Mary's sleeping. Joseph's having a dream and Jesus shows up to him. Hey, get the baby. That's me. I don't can say that, but get to Egypt. They're going to try to kill that baby, which is me. They're not going to do it, but get him out of here. Joseph wakes up to sleep, grabbed the baby, which told him to get the baby out. God's spray. And they came with haste. And found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them. Because Look at that. They went out and witnessed everybody what they saw. Oh, I can't witness. They're not saved, but they say, I've seen the Messiah. I've seen that baby. I've seen Jesus. There's no excuse for not telling people. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which they told them by the shepherds. Mary kept these things and pondered them in her heart. That's why she got saved. That's why she got right. And the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things 
that they had heard and seen as it was told them. He said, what's all that about? And when eight days, uh-oh, were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Jesus, Jehovah saves, which was so named of the angel Gabriel before he was conceived in the womb. Seven days of the Feast of Tabernacles. Seven days Solomon is having a feast day. He has an extra seven days. He adds to the feast of the seven month. Which could be the Tabernacles, but there, there are other in the seven month. Eight days he sends everybody home. Eight days after Jesus is born, they leave Bethlehem. They show up in Jerusalem. And when the days of her purification, according to the law of Moses, there, there's a, didn't he mention the law of Moses? Was accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Now Solomon's temple is not there no longer. This is Ezra's temple that has been refitted by Herod. But in the place where Solomon stood, the mount where he was, the mount where Abraham was going to offer Isaac his son. Here comes Mary with a little lamb in her arms. Eight days. Brings him to the temple. To circumcise him. According to the Jewish rite. And to name him Jehovah saves. Verse 25. And behold there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. The same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he has seen the Lord's Christ. There he is. And he came by the Spirit under the temple. Alright, that's interesting. Verse 36. And there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel, the tribe of Asher, she was of great age and had lived with her husband seven years from her virginity. And she was a widow about four score and four score and four years, eighty-four, which departed not from the temple. They are celebrating the temple seven days. Christ has been born. Eight days he sends him away. On the eighth day, here comes Jesus to the temple. The spot that Solomon, not the same temple, but the spot where Solomon has dedicated everything to the Lord. The people have brought their offerings, their sacrifices. Here we are in the eighth day, and Mary brings the little lamb to Jesus. And about 30 years later, John the Baptist is going to say, Behold the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. Now let's pick up in chapter 2, verse 41. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the Feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. When they had fulfilled their days as they returned, the child Jesus uh, tarried behind in Jerusalem and found, uh, excuse me, and Joseph his mother knew it not. But they supposed that him to have been in a company, went a day's journey, and they saw him among their kinsfolk and acquaintances. We're going through all the relatives. And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem, seeking him. And it came to pass after three days, that's an interesting number, they found him in the temple. Again, that's not Solomon's temple, but that's the temple. The same spot where Solomon's temple was. This is 12 years later. Sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. Another 17 years he's going to be in that temple teaching the people. And they're going to be angry as heck at him. And all that heard him were astonished of his understanding and answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou thus dwelt with us? Behold thy father, and I have sought thee sorrowing. He said, How is it that he sought me? When see not that I must be about my father's business. And he's in that temple. 
That temple that we're at right now is Solomon. And the date here is 1004 BC. Approximately, I'm going to give it a rough number, approximately 4,000 years later, Baby Jesus is going to come into that temple on the eighth day. On the eighth day, he sent the people away. Everybody starts leaving their cities because the taxation's over. Joseph and Mary leave, but they head to Jerusalem with that lamb of God. So, interesting fact. 